Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. We're going to be talking about another individual from the docuseries that I feel is very important to put on the R. Kelly Appeal TV, where here we discuss the situations that's going on within the appeal process and take you through the timelines of things that occurred that convicted Robert Sylvester Kelly in 2021. Now we are going to move into the second individual that I feel was very pertinent to the conviction. And she met R. Kelly back when she was 22 years old. And um, she's a choreographer, a dancer, and an actress. And she made her television public debut in 2012 for the reality series, Hollywood Exes, and then later starring in her film, um, Before I Do. Andrea Kelly is 45 years old, well, was 45 years old as of 2019. And she has three children from the marriage, Joanne, Jay, and Robert Jr., and after she got married, she changed her last name from Lee to Kelly. Andrea's divorce in September 2005, she filed a restraining order against Kelly uh, uh, saying that he assaulted her when she told him she wanted a divorce. Later in 2006, she filed for divorce, which was finalized in 2009. Now, Andrea Kelly and R. Kelly, um, they married in Colorado. And again, she was 22 years old. So Andrea began to reveal on The View in 2018 that R. Kelly emotionally and physically abused her throughout their marriage. She went on to explain that the abuse became so severe that she contemplated suicide. She talked on the incident where Kelly assaulted her in the back of his Hummer. And as a result of that, she has post-traumatic stress disorder. Some other time, she said Kelly hog tied her in a bed and fell asleep while she was still tied. She claimed that her motive for speaking out many, 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 many years after their divorce is to help other victims of domestic violence. It's about sa saving lives. And then in 2014, she married 36 year old uh, Barber and RB singer Brian McKee whom she divorced just two months of marriage after the allegations surfaced that he was having an affair. Her younger daughter, previously known as Jaya, announced on Instagram in 2014 that he is a transgender male and was changing his name today to Jay. At this point, Andrea Kelly's net worth um, estimated $40 million dollars. And there was some issue about R. Kelly being picked up for not paying child support. Andrea Kelly, um, in the Lifetime docuseries Surviving R. Kelly, we have her interview right here. Um, and it's not about surviving R. Kelly. I think she was on Fox TV or something. So I'm going to let you hear her interview. And then we're going to go into the interview um, that was on VH1 about her husband that she later divorced. Um, it seems like uh, she wasn't ready for a relationship. She was still in the healing phases. But let's get right into the segment. Here we go. I will say this all relationships where there's domestic violence be it physical emotional sexual is toxic from the beginning you just don't know it that's the problem because the charming man and the cunning man are the same and as women we're not even taught to know the difference because the charming man's going to take you to dinner tell you how beautiful you are he's going to dope on you he wants you to meet his mom and he believes that you can change his life and so is the cunning man the difference is the context behind why he's doing what he's doing so a lot of women we get in these relationships and we think oh he's so sweet he's so great he's so this he's so that but we don't know that we're meeting his representative because behind that man is a mom 
monster. So for all women, no one really knows in the beginning. And especially when you come from my background, I often say we're all branch, leaf, fruit, root. We're all a tree. And you have to know what's at the root of your tree to know why you bear the fruit that you do. And what was at the root of my tree is my grandfather was a Baptist preacher, but he was also the first man I ever saw beat a woman. And it wasn't so much what my grandfather did that changed me because I accepted that he was a monster. It's what my grandmother didn't do that changed me. Because the very next day, she got up and made that man breakfast like nothing ever happened. Like my grandmother was so elegant and what she taught me about abuse is you deal with it as a lady of grace. You have to understand that my grandmother was also the first lady. So she's sitting in a pulpit covering, covering her bruises while my grandfather is up in the pulpit. And it's like the same hands that you are taking to christen babies and cast out demons are the same ones that you use to whoop ass Monday through Saturday. You are hell on wheels, but Sunday you're an archangel. So I was taught at a very young age that God, love and pain were one. So fast forward, I'm in an abusive relationship. It's not foreign to me. That's what I grew up seeing. And I was taught again by my grandmother that you're just a lady of grace through it. You don't air your dirty laundry. And my grandfather taught me that if a man of the cloth is abusive, certainly a man of the world is. So no, my ex was not foreign to me. His behavior was not foreign to me. It was like, oh, this is what you do. So a lot of people probably start that way if it's not directly, if they're children of abuse growing up in a household where they're seeing abuse, when they get in these toxic relationships, it's not boring. And it's so irritating to me. So, uh, like, yeah, I, I feel you. I feel no, you. Like, I, my thing is, and I put it on my Instagram, and if people follow me, go on my page and you will find it. I have a quote that I created. And my quote says, there's no expiration date on your story and no time limit on your healing period. Because people have to understand if you've been in it for 10, 20, 30 years, it's probably going to take you just as long to come out of it to be whole. And you don't owe anybody else an explanation to why you did what you did when you did what you did. Because here's the thing. How am I going to voice what I'm going through when I haven't found my voice? How do I come out and be this powerful woman when I feel completely powerless? It is a process that you have to go through. You have to even go through the process of forgiving yourself for even allowing another human being to do what they did to you. Then you have to go through the process of forgiving your abuser so that you don't become the angry, jaded black woman who neck spinning and lip popping. Now everybody thinks you're the angry black woman. We don't even give grace for, we have to put ourselves speaking about the ones who've been abused, we have to put ourselves back together. Not to mention, and this is a lot of shade and a lot of grease for y'all out there who want to talk about me when there's children involved. You have to understand that we have a legal system that is in place that will let a mother like me walk into court and say, well, he hasn't done anything to the children. He has a right to see his children. So now you want me as his victim to make sure I facilitate visitation with this man, but you guys are not taking into accountability when there's pick up and drop off. What if that's the one time that he decides he's done and he's going to kill everybody, but he has a right to see his kids. So there's more to it. I have to also protect my children and my children unfortunately were exposed to not just their mom being abused before I came out. They had to deal with the stories of pedophilia with their father. That's too much to put on young children that don't even understand what's going on. So I couldn't come forward until I knew my children could handle it. And anybody that has a problem with that, unfortunately, I don't give a fuck that you have a problem with it anymore. I was very sensitive about it at one time, but I did have to realize that A, God knows the truth. It's not up to me to prove my truth and prove my journey to not nail motherfucker on the face of this earth. That's number one. Number two, you talking about me coming forward and why I'm doing it. And she's a gold digger. And she didn't say anything because she wanted money. Now she's saying something because she wants money. A, that's a reflection of you because that's the last thing on my mind. So for you to think it means that's something that you would do. 
because that's the last thing I'm thinking about doing. I'm thinking, how do I save people's lives? There's so many women out here who have been victims and they've been silent victims. And for me, I got to a point, Claudia was like, I cannot not say anything anymore. Seeing his victims on TV, seeing Jeronda Pace, I was like, hold on. Her story is identical to mine, and we don't even know each other. But no one's paying attention, and guess why they're not paying attention? Because my name is not Hannah. I'm not blonde hair and blue-eyed and live in the suburbs. Because if I was a white woman coming forth, you best believe it would have taken one time, and the whole nation would have rallied behind her to lock his black ass up. But because it's a black woman, all of a sudden, I'm trying to bring down a black man. Actually, it's the complete opposite. I'm trying to make this black man see you have to take ownership. You have to want your healing you have children that are watching you do this thing called life you have to right your wrongs and i love you enough to not be another yes man on your camp i love you enough to not sit around and collect checks and let you do the crazy shit that you're doing as long as you're doing concerts i'm getting paid i don't care somebody had to love him enough to say you know what enough stop get help you need to right your wrongs. And if I had to be the one to do it, if y'all want to talk about me, if you want to say whatever you got to say, that's fine with me too. I do. I do. Because I went through it. How could I not? I do. I do. And people want to say, oh, I remember back when she did an interview. Well, you have to understand back then he had an entire team. There was a whole world going on that I had no idea about. People need to be very clear in this. And let me set everybody straight since I'm on here with my girl. I can do this today because most interviews, I can't speak freely like this. <laughs> At the end of the day, you have accountants, you have managers, you have record companies, you have promoters that are promoting concerts. All these people are rallying for him to make it and be okay. So we're doing whatever we got to do on the back end to make shit go away, paying people off, getting rid of shit. Do y'all honestly think that they pick up a phone and call me and say, well, Drea, we have three of Robert's victims that we're going to pay, and we just want to know, are you okay with the amount that we're giving them? Hell no, they don't do that. Shit is being done behind my back, and there's a team to help him do it. Just like there's a team that helps get hotel rooms. There's a team that helps book flights. There's a team that go pay mamas and daddies. Yes. So let's be real clear today that me coming forward... I was very clear. It's not Drea just coming forward and it's my ex-husband and the father of my children. I'm coming forward and I got record labels who want me to be quiet. You have security that works for him. He wants me to be quiet because when he's not working, they're not getting paid. Accountants that want you to be quiet. So I feel like it was me against the world. You know, because my parents went through it and there was an article in the Chicago Sun-Times that Mary Mitchell did where my parents literally did go to the police and they went to the Sun-Times like, we cannot get in contact with our daughter. We're trying to reach her, not knowing at this time, like these girls are not lying, changing your cell phone numbers, He's paying all the bills. You're staying in the house. Like I came to a point where I realized this big palatial estate that we're staying in and this mansion that we're staying in with this big gate, that gate was not to keep fans out. That gate was not to keep crazy people out. That was to keep me locked in. So it is when I say it's so dark that there are no words and there's probably not enough time to even explain because in one sense you are being forced by your abuser to even tell your parents that you don't want anything to do with them so that you can get them off of his back so that he looks like the good guy that it's you making the decisions that you don't want to talk to your parents that you don't want to be around friends and family but if anybody knows anything about abuse that's a part of the abuse it's the alienation it's the keeping you away from your friends and family it's controlling the finances controlling where you go what you do what you wear but then as the victim you're like, I have to put on this happy face because I don't want the world to know how horrible this really is because guess what comes with that judgment? Oh, she's stupid. Oh, that'll never be me. Oh, the first time a man put his hands on me, that'll be the end. So you put on this front because then you don't want the judgment and you don't want people looking at you going, well, she done for staying. I had three kids. He's in control of all the money. My name's not on any of the bank accounts. Where am I going with three children and no money? Okay, so you've heard it from her interview, her emotional feelings, how she was trapped by R. Kelly not being able to go anywhere because of the fact that she had children. Um, she she is discussing her emotional feelings. So I'm not going to be judgmental on this. I'm going to leave this open to comments, views, and um, 
concepts from our our audience. Now we're going to move into a video of her and her second husband and pay attention to the conversation, the tone, pay attention to how she's directing and quote, controlling the situation. Let's see. Let's see what, what you get out of this. Work out early to get a you date got me night. out here looking crazy, but it's okay. I'm going to love you. What? You was getting your swole on. You was popping your muscles. All right. Tonight is D night. Date night and do it night if I get them drunk enough. So we're getting close, babe. Woo. We're getting down to the wire. Do you know how much we still have left to do? A whole lot. You and the guys have to go get fitted for your tuxes. I'm, what I'm saying is I haven't even talked to everybody to get their size or anything. It's so quick. Are you serious? Yeah, because we just haven't gotten around to that part yet. But how do you just not get around to them having... Because I had ring. Uh, you asked me a million questions about dress. So I've been helping get you together. Yeah. She, as in me, has been getting me together. All right. Him That's your and homies all sit back. We ain't got nothing. That's, they, that's her day. All we got to do is show up. That's right. So, babe, I have an idea. Because, you know, every bride gets her one gift. Right. I finally know what I want. Be kind. Be kind? The one thing I want more than anything in the world for my wedding gift is I think you should reverse your vasectomy. Are you smoking? No, babe, I'm serious. So you are really okay with us being married and not have any of our own children, yeah. nothing that we can, we can say a, that we, we created together. We can get a new puppy. Are you really serious? You won't even consider it? <laughs> Absolutely not. Why? That is so selfish. Uh, that's why I made it when I was single. Yay. And that was a selfish decision. No, it wasn't. It's no, not it wasn't. just you anymore, though. Right, I understand it, but I don't want to go back and rechange my idea. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that. I like my idea. Why? But I'm saying that I don't want to. I don't want to add that extra responsibility to myself because my career get ready to go in another direction. I don't have time to stop and change diapers. I think that they are some of the dumbest reasons on earth because you don't have boobs, therefore you won't be breastfeeding. You don't have a vagina. You can't push it out. And at the end of the day, you will not have a snuggly strapped to you while you're lifting weights. I do that in the grocery store. I have all the work. He doesn't. If I had my tubes tied and you wanted to have a baby, I would get it reversed. I wouldn't ask you to do that. That's selfish for me to even ask you to undo something that's that you felt that selfish. strong about. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Hey, I don't want to do that. When two people come together and they're in love and they want to have a baby, that's not selfish. I, no, that part's not selfish when y'all in agreement. We're not in agreement. Are you kidding me? I'm so serious. <laughs> like, Babe, my taste is trying to have a baby. and we Okay, well, then go babysit my taste, baby, once she has it. You are dead serious. I don't want no parts of that. No, it's not against you personally. I just me. Unless the baby coming with a million dollar check attached to it, I no. Focus on careers, your career, my career. We ain't twenty. What are you thinking I about? Know that. Okay, so what are you? Why is that even on your mind? I'm gonna need you to act like my nipples on my knees, and I'm 63 years old talking <laughs> about having the baby. No, I'm just saying. But with your career. I'm Still tight. No, but the baby. where your career is going, where my career is going, we don't have time for that. I really cannot believe you are sitting here like acting like having a baby. Oh God, they're gonna snatch out my vocal cords. I can't see. We can't no, go nowhere. Just saying, baby, it's required time. I don't have the time for that. What the hell else you gotta do? Uh, sing, record, work on my career. You know, open up businesses. I'm just keeping it real with myself. Okay. That's all. All right. You're gonna be all right without a kid. All right. A bitch is getting little irritated, though. Can I get a little consideration? Can I get, like, a maybe? I think about it. I just flat out got no. I'm like, oh, isn't this supposed to be a compromise? It's just a damn dictatorship. You'll thank me later. No, Mom. Yeah, you will. Whatever. I love you. Wow. Wow. So what are your views on that? Um, I do want to say that... Um, Kelly was, uh, Andrea Kelly decided to give love another try with another R&B singer. In 2014, she married Brian McKee. However, the couple divorced after just two months of marriage. Now, they were having that conversation prior to getting married. So do you feel that that was sort of an entrapment? I don't know. I'm not trying to put ideas out there. 
I just want to get your point of view. I believe that that was very pushy. <laughs> so let's get into the next portion of the video. Now we're going to the section of the comments about this video. Then we're going to go back to the first one and look at some comments. Beautiful Soul writes, four years ago, this looks like a mother having dinner with son home from college. Regina writes, I'm just realizing that in this clip, he actually gave away the real reason that he wanted to marry Andrea Kelly. She came with a million dollar check or more and a new baby was not part of his scheme. I'm glad Miss Kelly realized early in her marriage that she made a huge mistake by marrying this scam carn artist. Hopefully she has healed by now and has been able to find a real man and mutual real love. Um, okay, okay. Um, let me see. Drea, he's telling you who he is, believe him. But I think Drea is telling us who she is, believe her. I can't believe she said he has to be drunk to sleep with her. Um, yeah, that was another very critical thing that I denied. If I get him drunk enough, I wonder if they ever had an actual date night. So to get someone drunk enough to then push a baby on him shows the character, I believe, of Drea Kelly. Um, I don't believe that that is something that should be taken lightly. I do believe that uh, she may be very pushy and may want what she wants when she wants it. And it reminds me of Asante McGee. I believe these are all addictive ten tendencies. And also, what do you feel about the fact that Andrea Kelly said that it was normal for her to be abused? That right there puts us in a mindset that she expected what she expected and was willing to take on whatever it came with. I remember her saying in one interview that she was sitting in the back of a bus reading a Bible and R. Kelly came to her and said, you look like an angelical uh, person and I'm going to marry you one day. Okay, I get that. So where were, where were the counselors at the, the church that she belonged to? Why weren't they supporting her? And why there's always one person you tell your deepest, darkest secrets to. That's how things get out. But nobody said that they, that she came to them and told them all this abusive stuff was going on. They were worried. Nobody in a church, nobody anywhere, anywhere. And then she says that everybody's stories were the same. It's a collaboration of stories and that no one knew each other, but their stories were exactly the same. That is a telltale sign for me too, Andrea. But let's get into the remainder of the video. So now we're going to go to some comments from the VH1 video that we recorded earlier. Um, so Sandy Gonzalez a year ago writes, R. Kelly is not the only one who should be in jail. Record labels, managers, publicists, et cetera, et cetera. You all are complicit. Now, I believe that any woman who has been abused in any way, shape, or form should be respected. So don't get me wrong here. However, I do believe that when a person is starstruck, when they can't make decisions upon for themselves because they want to be in a position and they have to deal with the consequences that come with being in that position, that's a different story. You are voluntarily allowing yourselves to be abused and those individuals should not be given the same carte blanche or the same, uh, the same, um, what word am I trying to say here? The same, uh, they, they should be given the same treatment as someone who just really hit it first time. This man changed, this woman changed and they abused them. No, and that's why it's best and easiest to, to go the very first time. Don't expect it to change because it get worse, worse, and worse. So that's domestic violence education. That's when you need to contact the police. You need to contact domestic violence um, 
programs in your community, but you cannot just sit there and do nothing. Okay. And then later come back and blame the vic the person, the perpetrator for victimizing you. No, you victimized yourself because you stayed in that position. And the R. Kelly case in and of itself is an example that this should take anybody who's in a position of abuse in any way. That very first time R. Kelly should pop into your mind, this case, and that should tell you to get out immediately. So we're going to hear some domestic violence comments in here, not to support what Drea Kelly has done to R. Kelly, no, or to, or to say that what she did in her healing time was unwarranted. So let's just be keep an open mind and let's get some viewpoints on this. Only two people know what goes on in any relationship. Drea, you did what you had to do and kept your kids protected. Congratulations on your strength. Bless you. Great interview. Prayers for all victims of abuse. How can she know absolutely nothing? You always have your suspicions. Even if people were helping him, someone had to slip up at some time. She had to hear or see something. At least one person who felt guilty had to say something. It was said he had women in the house even while she was there. The only way that was possible is if she was locked away somewhere in the house. I just have too many questions. Cindy, 757, a year ago. He was on tape peeing on a minor. He's definitely guilty and she's just as guilty. Delilah, one year ago. Altered tape, that didn't stand up in court, but yet you still believe what you hear her say. Okay, that's Delilah as well. So this is the end of this video. Tell me what your thoughts are. I hope I didn't put too many ideas or concepts out there pertaining to how I see it because this R. Kelly Appeal TV is about what everyone feels. And I want everyone that comes to this channel to have a voice. Help us determine what we need to do in order to support R. Kelly at this particular moment. Someone told me to submit my channel to his attorney. And, um, but I truly believe that his attorney has heard all this stuff before. I mean, it's been on the me media. This is nothing new. So how is he still incarcerated? How was he still not going to be retried? How, you know, why did the government come back and say that they're going to stick to, you know, prosecutions, you know, argument and that they did nothing wrong. How are they able to get away with this? So I want you to leave your comments and your, um, you know, thank you for your subscriptions. Thank you for your comments and your shares. I so appreciate you. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. And as always, keep it 100.